Must be an easier way of taking off those trainers. <laughs> Tonight on Channel 5, the tragic story of the girl that was born with no knees or elbows. <laughs> I can't believe you're doing all this training just for a fun run. Fun run? It's not exactly a serious race, is it? I bet you'll see more honey monsters than Kenyans. <laughs> Imagine having to run to the supermarket, then back, then again, then back, and then again, and then back. Easy. You reckon? Yeah, I'd use a cardo. <laughs> You're just jealous, cos you know you couldn't do it. Ten kilometres? I could do it standing on my head. Come then. Enter the race. Show me what you've got, Paula Radcliffe. Never say that to Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> you said you could do it standing on your head. Definitely don't say that to Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> All right? Put me down. Oh, why is there never a vet around when you need one? <laughs> You've got to train for these things. I know. In fact, I think I'll pop out now and do a quick three-miler. All right, well, take it easy, especially on your first day. Thanks for the advice, Lucy, but I think you'll find I was doing half marathons when you were still skipping around in your school uniform. Only you could say that and make it sound like an alibi. <laughs> Almost there. Oh, not too fast. This is like doing a three-legged race with my less developed Siamese twin. Thanks for picking me up. That's all right. How far did you run exactly? Just less than three. Miles or kilometres? Minutes. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting to pull something. Please don't say that when you've got your arm around me. Especially not dressed like that. <laughs> did you remember to stretch? I want to get faster, not longer. Enough of your sex life. <laughs> You're not taking this training very seriously, are you? Yes, I am. Pint of lager, please. <laughs> yeah, tomato juice for the wife. <laughs> anyway, what's the point? Lucy's right. I'm clearly not up to this. Is that what this is all about, then? Trying to prove yourself to your beloved landlady? Yeah, Tim, that's right. I figured if I can run faster than your sister, she might let me have sex with her. <laughs> That's the way all you Northerners get a mate, isn't it? <laughs> You'll be fine. All you need is a sports massage. I know someone good. They helped me out recently with a squash injury. Squash injury? What happened? Did you injure yourself getting the lid off the Umbongo bottle? <laughs> Umbongo doesn't come in a bottle. It's a fruit drink in a pouch. <laughs> Do you think the Chuckle Brothers argue like this? Trust me, this masseur is brilliant. Give him a go. Him? <laughs> You're like a bloke, massager. Where was the injury? If you must know, it was a groin injury. <laughs> what, you mean way down deep in the middle of the Congo? <laughs> Sorry, I've got that on Bongo advert in me, Edna. I'll book my own massage, thank you very much. And do me a favour, don't tell Lucy I'm injured. I don't want to think I'm dropping out. Dropping out in those little shorts, I think it's unavoidable. <laughs> Letting a bloke massage you. You're unbelievable. I bet you insist on a woman where you get yourself waxed as well, don't you? Oh, I just fancied going straight to bed after my long run. Oh, you ran quite far then, did you? Yeah. Almost ended up at the hospital. <laughs> That's quite far, actually. I'm very impressed. <laughs> what are you doing? Just having my breakfast. Sitting down. Seemed appropriate having me breakfast high up. Why? It's Alpen. <laughs> Have a lunch. <laughs> what time are you back tonight? Not until late. I'm going to run back. Why? I've got a woman coming round. Oh, yeah? Is the chloroform worn off already? <laughs> what woman? Personal trainer. 
It's going to take me to the next level. Blimey. Listen to Usain Bolt. Well, Usain Bolt. I say tomato. <laughs> well, aren't you going to get the brush? Yeah. As soon as I finish my breakfast. I might tell Weight Watchers about this idea. <laughs> What's that? It's called a vegetable. You should have some on top of your wagon wheel next time. It will help with your rickets. <laughs> well, you made your schoolgirl error there, haven't you? Although generally accepted nowadays as a vegetable, the cucumber is, in fact, a fruit. You didn't know I was the font of all knowledge, did you? No, I had you down as a vegetable as well. <laughs> I meant, why are you slicing them? I thought you were having a bath. It's for my eyes. Better with or without? <laughs> with or without? Well, seeing as I'm looking at you... With! <laughs> Is this all in preparation for your big night out tonight? I'm not going out. There you are. You've got tickets to a concert. A ticket to what concert, Lee? A ticket to a concert I never told you about, tucked away right at the bottom of my handbag. That's a small venue. Who's on? <laughs> Prince. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I went in your bag. A fundraiser came to the door collecting money for a diabetes charity. Made me realise I really wanted a Mars bar. <laughs> How did you know I had a Mars bar in my bag? You've always got a Mars bar in your bag. Next time, you should have it with a bit of lettuce on top. It'll help with your hypocrisy. <laughs> Please don't root through my bag again. You're not my husband. You're my lodger. How would you like if I constantly rifle through your pockets? <laughs> if you must know, the ticket was an unwanted gift. From who? Whom, Lee? What, that Korean bloke down at the garage? <laughs> it was from Daisy. She's going to some Battle of the Bands type night, but I've decided I don't want to go. Well, if you're not using the ticket, I might go. No, you can't. Why not? Because... Last time you went to a music gig, they all had spiked Mohicans and safety pins through their noses. Yeah, well, S Club 7 were better before they went commercial. <laughs> Come on, let me have the ticket. No! All right, forget it, then. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. It's just that I promised I wouldn't tell you about it. Promise do. One of the singers. If it's Gina G, that restraining order expired years ago. <laughs> Look, it's Tim, all right? Tim's joined a band and he doesn't want you there because he thinks you'll take the mickey. Tim in a band? Yes. Your brother Tim? Yes. Tall fella, lighter. Is it that hard to imagine Tim fronting a band? If it's a marching band and he's twirling a baton, no. But a rock band? <laughs> so why aren't you going to watch? I just... think it might be a bit embarrassing. Your brother is going to be on stage bearing his soul to a hostile crowd. It could be the single worst, most humiliating experience of his life. And you don't want to see that? It's going to be brilliant! <laughs> Come on, you know you want to. Fine. I'll go on my own. It'll be easier to throw tomatoes at him if you're not there to stop me. <laughs> wow. You've just managed to name three vegetables in the last five minutes. Two more, it'd be the first time in your life you've had your five a day. Tomatoes are a fruit. Oh, shut up! <laughs> what to imagine, isn't it? Tim backstage at a rock gig. I wonder where he is. Here we go. Bag of dolly mixtures and a Robinson fruit shoot. I think we're getting close. <laughs> Listen, when we see him, don't say anything to undermine his confidence. Lucy, give me some credit. I'm his best mate. I'll just offer words of encouragement. <laughs> Good God, Ozzy Osbourne's been tangoed. How did he find out about this? It was on Radio 1. They did a big feature about it. Did they? Very funny. I'm sorry, Tim. What could I do? He found the ticket. Oh, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When do we get to meet Willy Wonka? I don't know, but I think we've just met a six-foot umpa lumpa. I accidentally laid out in the garden a bit too long. What, until someone thought you were a bench and varnished you? All right, it's spray-on tan, but it's necessary for the act. Why, are you bringing about the minstrels? Well, you could have 
criticise my skin and my dress sense. Anything else you'd like to take a pop at? I'd go for the ear piercing. <laughs> Sorry. See, so you gone for the left ear. That's the gay one, isn't it? It's not, actually, because I googled it. The right one's the gay ear. How can you have a gay ear? <laughs> it's like having straight teeth. Or bifocals. Very good. Oh, yeah, or, um, a lesbian ankle. <laughs> well, at least I'm not sticking to the same look I've had since 1993. You wouldn't even know where to go for a piercing. Yeah, exactly. But we do Claire's accessories. <laughs> right, dude. We're on next. Stop chatting up the ladies. Though I can see why you'd be tempted. What's not to like? Because it'd be incest. <laughs> well, wish me luck. Timmy, you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Why don't you forget all about it, go home and run yourself a nice hot bath of creosote remover. <laughs> oh, you're really enjoying this, aren't you? Well, just you wait till I'm out on that stage. You won't be enjoying it then. <laughs> Not a very forgiving crowd, are they? Forgiving? Jesus would find it hard not to throw sandals at this bunch. <laughs> you don't deserve to live! <laughs> well, someone's got to be the Simon Cowell figure. That was Yellow Snow! Next up, give it up for... The Auditors! He's not going to do banter with the crowd, is he? Please, no. I told him to just say hello. Please, just hello, Tim. How do you do, London? <laughs> oh, God. Or perhaps I should say Blackpool. Why Blackpool? Because now's the time for us to provide you with some rock. <laughs> I'm going to be sick. I need to get out of here before he says, here's a little ditty. And here's a little ditty. <laughs> by the name of Viva Las Vegas. Hit it! Well, I'm silly, gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. Got a whole lot of money that's ready to burn. This is great! Those Get stakes are higher. There's a thousand pretty women waiting out there. Somewhere in a parallel universe, Alice Cooper is advising someone on the tax advantages of a cash ISA. Did you write this one, darling? Dance! 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 What a winker. Lock your doors. Why? Just lock them. It wasn't a chicken, was it? It was a man. At least I think it was. He was wearing a mask. What, you mean you think it was a chicken dressed as a man? <laughs> what do you mean, a mask? A clown mask. Was he standing on the back of a zebra? <laughs> no. Well, the last one I saw was. And when he fell off, everyone just laughed. But I cried, especially when the ambulance that picked him up fell apart. <laughs> what was he doing? Throwing eggs at people. The clown in the woods! I don't know, we ran off. Oh, God. He's not. I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Yeah, perhaps he's lost. <laughs> Maybe he was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> well, whoever he is, he's out there. We've got to get out of here. How can we? 
We're in the middle of nowhere and the car's not working. I saw a film recently called Roadkill about loads of college kids who broke down in the desert in their camper van. They all decided to leave the vehicle and you know what happened? One by one they were picked off and eaten by a family of inbred cannibals. <laughs> well, thanks for that. I am thinking of having a nightmare later, but I'm running out of ideas. I will try and work that in. <laughs> oh, God, it's always the pretty boys they get first. I saw a film about people that broke down in a car and they stayed exactly where they were and they didn't get killed. In fact, it was the car that led them to safety. What film was that? Herbie Goes Bananas. <laughs> Look, we're staying put, keeping the doors locked, and we'll find help in the morning. We'll take it in turns to keep lookout. And who put you in charge? If it wasn't for your stupid no-gadgets-allowed policy, the police would have been here by now. I hope you're not blaming me for this. It's not me that started shouting at Coco the bloody psychopath. I thought you said he wasn't a psychopath. Well, he wasn't at first, but Tim has a way of bringing out the worst in people. Could be worse. We could be in Milton Keynes. What? You said Milton Keynes was full of psychopaths. Cyclepaths! <laughs> Tim. Tim, are you awake? Thank you, Lord Sugar. Please, call me Margaret. I know you're used to inflating the women in your life. Please don't do it to me. Do you think he's gone? I hope so. But if he hasn't, don't worry. I'll look after you. And like I say, when we do find a proper campsite, if you're still nervous, you can always sleep in my tent. She'll be fine. <laughs> Thought you were asleep. You were hoping I was asleep. I was hoping you were in a coma. I thought it was really brave to go out there on your own. It's nothing. <laughs> Going into those woods was just natural instinct. It's the one advantage of being brought up by a family of gibbons. <laughs> Sometimes in life, you've got to forget about your own safety and just protect those around you. If you're looking for the pretty boy, he sat at the front. <laughs> Lucy. You know when there's a fire and you're supposed to say Mr. Sands is in the building so nobody panics? Yeah. Well, Mr. Chuckles has just popped up to say hello. <laughs> oh, you and your disgusting euphemisms. <laughs> if you don't stop trying it on with my sis... been a bit of a delay. <laughs> He's gone. Are you sure? I think so. I don't know. But something tells me we're in big trouble. Oh, thank God, it's Batman. <laughs> they're coming! Oh, my God, they're going to kill us! Quick, in the glove box. We'll never fit in there. There's a camping knife. Oh. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't leave that at home. Well, it is a gadget. No, it isn't! Well, Inspector Gadget had one in his thumb. <laughs> Look, Daisy, I love you to bits, but it has to be said, sometimes you are an absolute idiot. Oh, yeah, 
Sarah, what were you going to do with a knife, posh nuts? Offer to slice their cheese or take the fall off their bloody Chardonnay? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, the weather's not great, and uh, Tim's car broke down. Oh, yeah, and the car's been surrounded by a load of nutters. But it's not that bad. They've gone with a light-hearted theme. Hello? Hello? Oh, lost signal. What? Have you had that all this time? Oh, I see. Sorry. I suppose it is a sort of gadget, isn't it? I'll turn it off. It's no good. The reception's gone. Someone's going to have to get out of the car, try to get the signal back, and then phone the police. I'll go. No, you can't go. If anything happened to you, I'd never forgive myself. Especially after my outburst. You mean the world to me. Lee, you go. Come on, you keep telling us what a big man you are. Now's your chance to prove it. Unlock the door. It's time for Batman to meet the Joker. <laughs> Can you take the child locks off, please, Timothy? to get here as quick as they can. Oh, thanks for that. I was thinking of asking them to take the scenic route. <laughs> Listen, if anything happens, you know, if they come back and start attacking me, do you promise you'll get out of the car and... Good luck. Just had this turtle waxed. <laughs> yes. Must be Daisy's mum. No, she's a bit busy at the moment. All right, I'll let her know. Yeah. She loves that one, doesn't she? Bye. Daisy? Yeah? Herbie Rise Again's on at half ten tomorrow night on ITV4. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. I'm telling you, the doctor said my friend might have something called varicoceles which causes them to shrink. Friend? What friend? Come on, Tim. Let's stop all this friend nonsense. We both know we're talking about you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me. It's you with a problem. Wish you would have found out if you let the doctor examine you. Female doctors should not be examining a man's testicles. Especially pretty ones. Trust me, there was nothing pretty about you. You know what I mean. <laughs> Come on, Tim. There's no harm in getting yourself checked out. No point being immature about this. If yours have shrunk, you need to know. They can't shrink. Listen, Mother Teresa was six foot four when she was 19. <laughs> I know mine haven't shrunk, because unlike you, I examine them regularly, and I know they're always the same size. What if you were born with it? Born with it? What if you were born with tiny testicles? I was. <laughs> it went so well with my tiny feet and tiny toes, it was a matching set. <laughs> well, maybe I was born with these and I've never noticed. If you were born with those, the midwife must have thought you were triplets. <laughs> What are you doing? I am Googling men's testicles to see what the average looks like. Find out once and for all which one of us has got the problem. Oh, great. I come round for a cup of tea. Instead, I get gay porn. <laughs> Shouldn't that plumber be wearing some sort of safety equipment? <laughs> Clothes, for a start. <laughs> Why 
Why is that one doing that? I don't know. Maybe he's hungry. <laughs> there you go. Look at the size of those beauties. They're no different to mine. That's somebody's chin. <laughs> I'll try a different site. No, you won't. I'm going to get that tea. Hello. I bought this back. Well, the cake was a disaster. I tried to make an upside-down cake, but I turned it over twice without thinking, and it ended up being the right way up. <laughs> I think I'm more of a fruitcake person. You know, uh, you and Tim have been together for four years? Yeah. What was the longest relationship you had before that? About a year. Right. And in comparison to that other relationship, was there anything you noticed different about Tim when you started going out with him? Well, Tim was a lot more grown up. Right. How old was the other one? Six. <laughs> Six? Yeah. Yeah, they used to call me the cradle snatcher. How old were you? Seven. I'm talking about proper, serious relationships. Um, he asked me to run away with him and live on the moon. I'd say that's fairly serious. What about grown-up relationships? In comparison to other boyfriends, was there anything, specifically a couple of things, that were a different size to what you were used to? Oh, is this about his ears again? Oh, you're very really sensitive. It's not like he keeps going on about you and your big nose. I've got a big nose. All right, but it's not like he keeps going on about you and your tiny face. Will you get it into your head that it's you with the problem, not me? How do you know? Be honest. How many testicles have you actually seen in your life? Enough. I'm a member of a gym. I've got eyes like a hawk. Why not? You've got balls like a sparrow. <laughs> Birds don't have testicles. Actually, come to think of it, they did have in that lap dancing club. And you're honestly telling me you've checked out other blokes in the gym? Of course not. Right. Well, there's only one thing for it. <sighs> this is ridiculous. No, it's not. We're just going to find out who the abnormal one is by spending an hour in here checking out other blokes when they get naked. <laughs> it doesn't sound so bad when you say it like that. <laughs> and how do you think we're going to survive in here for an hour? It's over 80 degrees. We can pop out for cold showers. Oh, good. So if a member of staff asks us what we're doing, we say we're checking out naked men, then having cold showers. <laughs> oh, um, Tim, I forgot to say, the woman on reception said no towels allowed in the sauna. Looks like we're going to have to take them off. That's odd. Why can't you have towels in the sauna? No. Something to do with terrorism. <laughs> be very easy to conceal something under these towels. That's the idea, isn't it? For your own safety. How would you feel if I suddenly whipped my towel off and came at you, weapon in hand? <laughs> and why didn't the receptionist mention this to me? She probably thought you were a regular. Oh. And what are you, an extra large? <laughs> Funny you should say that. I'm not taking my towel off. Listen, mate, it's not good for you keeping it all wrapped up like that. It's like broccoli. It's go all limp. Much better to let it steam. Yeah, much nicer. Al dente. I think I'll just leave you two boys to it. <sighs> I'm in some sort of Swedish nightmare. No wonder the Scandinavians have such a high rate of suicide. I always thought it was something to do with Ikea. <laughs> oh, um, Tim, I forgot to say. Don't tell me, let me guess. Did the woman on reception say we weren't allowed towels in the sauna in case Al-Qaeda were hiding under there cooking broccoli? <laughs> something like that, yeah. Oh, it's no towels, is it? You two keeping yours on, then? No, of course not. Come on, then. You first. Come on, lads. We're all adults. Bagsy, you first. I said it before you. Yeah, but you didn't say Bagsy. It doesn't count if you don't say Bagsy. 
both at the same time. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> How's your mum? Fine. How's yours? Dead. Oh, yeah. Just like mine. Yes! <laughs> well done, mate. On your... They're smashing. <laughs>of a waste, isn't it? I'm having a clear out. And anyway, when are you ever going to drink elderflower rum? If you ever became a gay pirate. <laughs> What's this one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's called Brain Dead. It's my cousin Tony's homemade potato hooch and it makes you go blind. Tony? Which one's Tony? The blind one. <laughs> I'm seriously, it's lethal. A couple of these and you'll wake up with no memory of the entire evening. Oh, that old chestnut again. Funny, isn't it, how we conveniently forget things when we're drunk? Oh, not this again. It was a quick snog with a stranger at a works party. And what's more, I don't even remember it happening. I was very, very drunk. Yeah, so you claim. Excuse me, I thought you were my lodger. When did you become my husband? Yesterday, we got married. <laughs> you probably don't remember you were drunk. <laughs> or pretending to be drunk, anyway. Why is it when we have rows you're always so bloody righteous? I don't know, why are you always so bloody wrongous? <laughs> People don't really forget things when they're drunk. OK, Mr Memory Man, you asked for this. Get some of this down your bloody neck and we'll see how easy it is to black out. Fine, bring it on. <laughs> Very potato -y. I'm getting Maris Piper with a... <laughs> ..subtle hint of bird's-eye potato waffle. I'm glad you like it. Let's get mashed. If Carlsberg did hangovers. <laughs> oh, God. I can't feel my hand. I've had a stroke. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, God. What are you doing in my room? Your room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I didn't own Kaplunk. <laughs> oh. Have you been sleeping in my bed? Yeah. I also think I've been sitting in your chair and eating your porridge. <laughs> Why are you in here? I can't remember. Me neither. Oh, well, that solves the blackout argument. Looks like you're the winner. <laughs> oh, oh, God! I take it you're naked as well? Well, I kept my socks on. I've got some dignity. <laughs> OK. One of us needs to get out of this bed. OK, I'll go, but I'm wrapping the sheet around me. 
crawled out on the bed naked. You can drop the dirty talk. You've snared me once already. <laughs> If a woman wanted to snare you, she wouldn't need a litre of 85% proof spirit. It could be done with a wine gum. <laughs> OK, plan B. <laughs> always be careful what you wish for. What does that mean? We've always had a thing for Tom Cruise. Where's my jeans? Well, I've got some of them now. <laughs> so, um, how are you feeling? Like I've been pounded by some kind of jackhammer. Barry White. <laughs> Proves it wasn't my idea. I hate Barry White. You love him. <laughs> Tea lights. You. Petals in a bowl of water. You. <laughs> Bag of jam donuts. All right, I'll take that one. <laughs> oh, sorry. Please, can you stop apologising? OK, sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry. It's your own fault for having big, brutish hands that keep getting in the way. <laughs> Too far the other way. OK. I'll meet you in the middle. When I say meet you in the middle, that's not a euphemism for... Can you stop talking? <laughs> Sorry. Do you want some juice? That wasn't one either. Look, let's sit down. We need to talk. Look, if we're going to get past this, we need to agree on a few things. Firstly, you have to stop flinching at everything that could possibly count as a double entendre. OK. Secondly, no more pussyfooting. <laughs> and we have to make sure it never, ever happens again. It won't. You know, unless we got really mullered again and never, ever happen again, you're right. <laughs> and most importantly, we have to make sure that nobody else finds out. That way we won't be reminded every five minutes, will we? OK, deal. Well, I hope you two are proud of yourselves. <laughs> you disgust me. Almost as much as Lee's bedsheets do. <laughs> I normally have a shower in the morning, but after lying on those, I think I'm going to go home and give myself a nice good scrub down with some sandpaper. <laughs> what was your brother doing here? I don't know. I thought he was meant to be away on holiday. Come on, think. Was I using these powers last night? Actually, I've just remembered. Tim turned up last night. Hola, mis amigas! <laughs> it's Tim. He's talking Welsh and he's got a tiny new wife. Tell him we're dead. He says we're dead. I brought two hours of holiday videos. Tell him we wish we were dead. <laughs> He's never going to let us forget this. I'm not sure I can cope with that. Don't worry. I'll talk to him, explain things. It's about time he learned about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Having said that, this is Tim. I'll probably have to take a courgette and a lady's purse. <laughs> OK, but in the meantime, can we please make sure that nobody else finds out about this? Hello, you cheeky little rascals. <laughs> Saw heads this morning, have we? Tim's tiny Welsh wife has grown. <laughs> <laughs>